All right. Hello, everyone. Some slight technical problems there, so we just couldn't get an image. But eventually, we managed to get it here. So we're a little bit behind schedule, but I'll be starting now. All right, welcome to this talk about uh, editor support in L. I call it perspectives from an editor hacker, so you can guess what I'm into. Um, briefly about the background for this talk, um, or rather the agenda. I'm going to give you a, a very short background, and then I'm going to mostly uh, talk about the current state of editor support in L, and hopefully show some demos. And I'll also talk a little bit about my thoughts on uh, what's going to happen in the future, in the short term and the longer term. And we'll try to summarize, and if time permits, we'll have some questions and answers. All right. So very quickly about me. Uh, my name is Magnus Rundberget. I work for a consultancy called Kodemake here in Oslo. And I started getting into Elm about one and a half years ago um, after watching uh, a talk by Evan Chaplicki about uh, Let's Be Mainstream. And I figured a fun way to learn a new language which would be to try and write an editor integration. Might not be the common path, but it's, it's a way to, to learn a new language as well. And after that, I've been, uh, uh, I created um, an Elm library called Elm Bootstrap, which is a wrapper around the Bootstrap for CSS library. Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much into hacking editors. That's, I find that cool. All right, so what, what's the editor support like? Uh, pretty much all the, the major text editors have some level of support for, for Elm. Um, I've ordered them in the, uh, by uh, how advanced their uh, Elm support is. Uh, in my humble opinion, that is. Uh, it might not be completely fair, or some should be higher than others, but uh, yeah. So um, as I said, I've been uh, writing a plugin for Lighttable, so I'll be showing some examples from Lighttable, but the other editors are definitely great, and I know people uh, don't mainly want to change their edit just because of some language features, but anyways. So what are you looking for in, in uh, terms of features from, from an IDE or other? Well, it would depend on whether you're looking for a text editor or a proper IDE, obviously. But uh, some of these things are things that you typically look, uh, would expect. Uh, the, the main one is syntax highlighting, and that's really easy to implement. So all the editors have support for, uh, for syntax highlighting. Uh, next up is probably you would expect some sort of auto-completion support. Some people love it and others hate it. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm at. It depends. Uh, code navigation, you should be easy to navigate uh, in your code base. So things like jump to definition, uh, find usages, uh, jump to a module, and so on and so forth. Uh, you probably would... Uh, like to have some sort of linting support, some static analysis of your program to identify problem areas, and even better if it could actually provide uh, help to, f to, to fix those problems. Uh, you'll probably also expect to get some help from your editor, uh, things like uh, documentation for functions, uh, looking at the type signatures, uh, stuff like that. Uh, if you've used a full featured IDE, you'd probably used to having a lot of refactoring uh, features uh, in the Elm space. It's a little bit light on that. Uh, formatting of your code, it's obviously something you'd expect. Luckily, that's mostly sold by Elm format, so I think all these editors have some level of integration with Elm format. And there's a lot of other miscellaneous stuff uh, uh, that's available or, or you might expect to find. So, let the demo gouts be with me. And I'll show you some stuff in Lighttable, basically. All right, so I have a cheat sheet on the right hand side there. I might not get through all of that, but uh, auto completion, I'll start with that. Uh, pretty much all the editors are using something called ARM Oracle, which provides uh, auto, or the facilities to implement an auto complete 
uh, for, for third-party package symbols. So uh, I need to save here first. So you can find all the publicly available or all the exposed uh, symbols and values, functions and values uh, from that given module. Uh, some have more fancy uh, rendering of their uh, autocomplete and others have a simpler implementation. So this you will find in, in pretty much all the editors. But it would be neat if you have some sort of smartness in your autocomplete based on the context you're actually in. So I started experimenting a bit in Lighttable, seeing that since I'm in an exposing clause, I want to be able to expose only the functions uh, available in this module. So if I write extract me, it knows that's, that's in here. But if I try to do E again, it knows I've already exposed that value. So that's just a little helper to, to, to give the, uh, a bit of um, context awareness so you actually get useful suggestions rather than just dumping absolutely everything based on, on starting with or whatever. Uh, similarly, when you do imports, you can get only imports for packages you actually uh, have in your project. And once you've imported it, you'll see that uh, HTML attributes is no longer suggested because I've already imported it. It doesn't make sense to import it twice. Right? So that's uh, a little bit. Um, right. So let's try something a little bit more advanced. Move up. And the trick here is I'm starting with the type annotation because then you need uh, some information to be able to actually provide uh, the auto completion. Otherwise, you'll have to write your own type, type inferencer. And I wasn't really uh, up for that. <laughs> so if you send in a point here and I return a point. So this is a very silly function. And I'm going to send in an amount and a point. And I'm going to update the point. And you see that recognizes the, uh, the variable for the function. And if I say y, point y, uh, plus amount, right? So you can get some level of auto completion there as well. So uh, another helpful thing, which is just convenience really, but if I want to write a decoder, and I want to alias my decoder import with decode, so I'm just going to write decode. And I happen to know there's a function called field there. So if I do a magic shortcut, control I in my editor, it will import the JSON um, module, uh, the decode module, and give it an alias. Uh, and sometimes it's ambiguity, then obviously you have to pop up some way to, to suggest which alternative you actually mean. If I do something dot map, there's a lot of map functions in Elm, so obviously you have to solve that. Right, uh, code navigation. So jump to is the obvious one. So here I have a dummy uh, add function in the dummy, mo dummy module. So I could jump to that with a shortcut or uh, jump back, which is sort of handy. Uh, it would be neat if I could jump into source, the sources of third-party packages. So hey, that also works. So that's sometimes handy when you want to look at the implementation of something. Uh, the documentation might be a little bit sparse. So that's, that's useful. Uh, and you have fine usages and, and stuff like that as well. Uh, right, so how about help? Well, different editors solve this in different ways, but uh, here it's shown in line, so I'm just rendering the markup, which is basically the package documentation for, for this particular function. And it would be neat if you could actually document your own functions. Uh, what the hell did I do there? Uh, yeah. So I messed something up. Sorry. Right. So you can show the documentation for your own functions as well. Right. So that's help. Uh, and linting. Uh, it's really hard to see that. You probably can't see it because. 
I didn't really think about uh, light uh, themes for your editor, so I'm using a dark theme. There's a squiggly yellow line under here. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> so um, basically, linting means we're calling the AL make executable uh, with the warn flag, so you get uh, hints about stuff that not only errors, but actually warnings as well. And some of them happen to be parsable in some sense. So you can actually provide fixes as well. So here I'm missing a type annotation, and I can provide a quick fix for adding that type annotation quite quickly. So that's useful. Or if you have an editor error, some of these error messages are actually also parsable. So here I can actually fix that typo. But a lot of the errors are not that easily parsable, so it's really hard to provide fixes for them. But there's a lot of issues in the uh, issue tracker for Elm for providing more tooling support to, to do stuff like this. Right, um, so that's linting. Let's jump into Atom, which has a lot of really cool and advanced features. I won't have time to show them all here, but the auto completion there is, uh, yeah, it's been working hard. Um, I'm just gonna show you uh, some of the simpler ones. So I'm going to write a multiply function here, which takes a number, number, and returns a number. And based on that, it can actually help me uh, fill in some blanks. I might not actually like these variable names, but it might save me a little bit of typing to do this. So question marks. It's really persistent, this uh, linter thingy. Right. So that's a simple one. Let's do something a little bit more advanced. So I'm going to uh, define my own type. I don't think really maybe catch captures the essence of what it does, so we need it perhaps. And it's going to be defo a, or it's going to be nope, right? <laughs> So I need a function, function to handle that, or a function that uses that. So I'm going to send in the perhaps of a string. And I'm going to return a string, because that's, we like strings. So my fun, I'm going to send in the thing. And let's hope it works. Case thing of no. It's not doing its job here. Oh, uh, I saw it. It's a bit... <laughs> there, yeah! <laughs> Voila! And... No! <laughs> so it's a bit touchy. Yes! I did it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't expect the applauses coming there, but okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's handy if you have uh, case statements with uh, a lot of different branches, right? So it, it saves you typing. And it, it uses the, type, the types to actually infer what it needs to do for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, Adam also has some refactoring features. So to make it easy for myself, I have one here. So let's say I want to extract this into a function. I can do lift to top level and my phone. Unfortunately, I actually have to fill out the parameters and it's not able to infer the types either. So it saves me a little bit of typing, but I have to know what I'm doing. So I can't just blindly refactor. But anyways, it's, uh, it's handy. So the last thing I was going to show you was uh, REPL integration. Uh, coming from Clojure, I've been sort of used to using a REPL for everything. Uh, not so much in Elm, but I do use it for some things, um, particularly when I'm trying to struggle with the JSON decoders, uh, even though I've, I haven't read the book, but uh, <laughs> sometimes uh, I get stuck. So I could uh, open a REPL here. And I can uh, import the dummy module. Now 
I could use dummy and test the add function. I'm just going to not send it any parameters, and it returns a function, which takes two numbers and returns a number. So if I do it, it's two. Night. So you get the results here in line. And it's quite useful when you're working with JSON decoders. You just set up a dummy uh, JSON string, and then you sort of incrementally try to, imp to implement your decoder whilst always looking at the results. It would be awesome if I could sort of REPL into my running Elm program and do wild, wacky stuff. But at least this is useful in some uh, contexts. Right, so that's probably what I have time for now. Right, um, so missing features. Obviously, there's a lot of them, but some of the ones that I'm missing is uh, uh, a lot more advanced intelligence. So, uh, uh, yeah, basically, uh, having it, the, the, the autocomplete be a lot more aware of the context I'm in and, and providing really, really useful suggestions because I'm not really impressed when you get a ton of options and they're really the ones I, I, I want either. anyway. So, um, a safe rename feature would be awesome. Uh, both, I know IntelliJ and Atom has implemented uh, re rename uh, features, but they're not really safe. So when you use them, uh, it works a lot of times, but there will be a lot of corner cases that where it doesn't work. So be aware of that. And that's because just having the type annotations is not enough. You have to do more analysis to actually do safe renames. Uh, a move function, move feature would be awesome if I wanted to move a, f a function from one module to another and have all the uh, imports and all that be automatically updated. That would be super sweet. Right, and a smart extract function would, uh, with, type, with, with the types and stuff would be even better. So I'm running a bit short on time here, but anyways. Uh, so what are the challenges uh, for, for making more progress? Uh, we're basically missing a common AST, or I read about a couple of days ago, uh, a, a CST. So an AST is an abstract syntax tree. I'm sure you're aware of, or aware of that. Um, they're often very geared towards compilers and might not be all that useful for an, for an IDE. You might actually need a lot more information uh, about the code. So you, you you might want a concrete syntax tree where you actually have the code, the white spaces, the commas and parentheses and all that stuff to actually do transformation of the code. Um, obviously, there is an AST in LMake, uh, but that's not really meant for public consumption. It's geared towards the compiler, obviously. So there, there aren't any hooks to actually access that. Elm format has its own AST. It's inspired by the AST from, the, um, from LMake, but made adjustments to suit uh, Elm Format's uh, case. Uh, there are some thoughts about making that publicly available uh, at some point, but it hasn't happened yet, and it's probably going to take some time before that materializes. Then we have editors like Lighttable and Atom that implement their own simple parsers and their own representation, uh, which seems a little bit wasteful, and especially for people who aren't really awesome at writing parsers, that's the problem. Uh, there's a uh, parser for Elm written in Elm called Elm ASD. I'm not sure about the state of that. But. And then there's a tool called Elm Analyze, which uh, does some static, more advanced analysis of your code base. It uh, looks pretty interesting. It has its own parser, and there's a, probably a ton of other initiatives writing their own parser. So doing something about that would be awesome. Uh, Another problem is there's no hooks into the Elm type inferencers. Uh, I don't know how that would actually look, but it would be awesome to not having to write my own type inferencing logic. Uh, another problem is obviously partial parsing. When you're writing a code, most of the time your, the state of your, of, of your AST or your compile state would be in an invalid state. So you obviously have to handle that, otherwise things break all the time, so that's, that's not going to be very useful. Uh, I talked briefly about Elm Oracle. Uh, it's been sort of stale for well over a year. 
so that doesn't really, it provides some basic rudimentary support for all editors, but it's, it's a bit too simplistic for what people actually expect to find. So future paths um, on 11 seconds. So I'm gonna run over a minute or two, but I'm gonna blame that on technical difficulties. Uh, so one path is obviously that we continue a bit like, ooh, that bad. Come on. Some sound. Uh, right, every editor for themselves, it's a bit like the path we're on now. It's very time consuming and it feels a little bit wasteful. So that might not be the ideal path. It's probably going to be the path in the very short term, but I'm hoping that we're going to address that. Uh, it could be that Evan or elmlang.org or whatever I'm going to call it uh, creates some sort of tooling uh, uh, kit or executable that we can actually access from, from editors and other tools. Uh, it's not highly unlikely. I know uh, uh, Elm has, uh, Evan has talked about it, uh, but we don't really have any idea about when. Um, another initiative would be if the community started looking at creating something like a language server that could be based on the language server protocol from Microsoft, or we could decide that actually that's not going to fill our needs and we, we go our own path in, in terms of doing something better. Uh, I don't know, but there's certainly been a lot of interest in the community, so if people are interested in, in helping out in that area, do, do reach out on Slack or meet up with me later. We can talk about that. Or it could be that JetBrains or some of the tool vendors actually consider Elm to be mainstream and just solves it for people who actually like those kind of tools. So to summarize, uh, we do have some decent IDE-like features available already today. Uh, some editors have more, others have less, but it's, it's improved a lot in the one and a half years I've been uh, working with Elm. Uh, it's obviously still a very long way to go. Um, but the good thing is that the community is really eager to address this. And I know that Evan is aware of, of people's wishes here. So at some point, the community should sort of uh, start addressing this and maybe uh, obviously synchronize with Evan and his thoughts about uh, wh where where his plans are and whether he can help out providing the hooks that we actually uh, wish we had. So that's pretty much it. We don't have time for any questions, but do, do meet up with me later on, and uh, I'm happy to discuss anything, really. All right, thanks. Thank